Hello everybody, uh, today I'm going to be installing a toilet paper oil filter on my car. So I'll tell you a little bit about it and why I uh, decided to do this. And the first time I heard about a toilet paper oil filter, my grandpa showed me one on his, one of his old cars. And he talked about it like it was something that was inferior to the uh, filters that we have nowadays. But in fact, they're quite a bit better can open this up and show you guys so I've been fascinated with these for quite a while and I've always wanted to put one on a vehicle mostly people put them on diesels because it's not usually really worth it to put it on a gas engine but there it is that's a That's the stock filter that'll come with it. And uh, this is the newest, I believe this is the newest version that they come with. They no longer have the snap ring on the outside. It relies on the, the seal around the outside and also this, this dam on the outside. And for the inside, it relies on not necessarily the fitment on the tube, but this dam at the bottom here. So you want that to bite into the you want that to bite into the toilet paper and have that one and you also see it bit down inside on the out on the outside. So that's my understanding of the new version. On the old version with the snap ring, that was uh, supposedly the snap ring here was supposedly to seal out the outside. So. All right, so let's get installing this, I guess. This is all the stuff it comes with. I've already kind of figured out what I want to do. I could either install it. It's got many, uh, multiple places I can install it. So the deal with this filter is it doesn't replace your current oil filter on your car. It, it takes a small, see there's a small, should have showed you when it had, when I had this apart, but there's a, I think a 1 16th inch hole in there. And uh, it's just a flow restrictor, and that's so you don't you don't lose your oil pressure. And it just takes a little sample of your oil, and filters it all the time, so it uses your oil pressure to run up through the middle of that toilet paper tube, over like come up through the middle, and then flow down through the sides, and then. Um, should have showed you that before the the oil flows up through the tube and then down through the through the toilet paper and then um, across this screen and there's some some valleys in there that all lead to this outlet port and then from there it goes through a hose and then there's multiple ways to do it but the easiest way is to just run it back into your oil filter cap, oil filler cap. And luckily, this one fits right on my car. So it'll be easy. I'm gonna end up mounting this uh, inside. There's a space right here. And the reason I was doing that instead of here, which would also be a good spot, because it would sit up like this, that would also be a good spot. This is normally where the air conditioner um, condenser would go. So there's a nice spot right there for it. And if I ever got in a fender bender or something, I might ruin my filter. And this filter could last through multiple cars that I have. So. 
if I get a different car, I'd like to keep the filter. So I think it's more protected back there. I'm gonna have to drill one hole. I bought a bolt that will screw into this hole and work as one of my one of my mounting holes. Then I'll have to drill another hole. So That'll be nice. It'll be pretty easy to drill through a sheet metal. Yeah. Okay, right now I'm just trying to get the, the screw to fit in the hole. We got it started, so. Okay, that's pretty good. The reason I wanted to use this existing hole is it already had machine threads in there, so it's gonna hold a much more confident in a pre-threaded hole. So the bracket's on. One of the main reasons why I wanted to get one of these is because the claim on these is you'll have clean oil all 100% of the time. I already go pretty long on my oil change intervals. I usually go at least 10,000 miles. Nowadays that's not as much as it used to be but it's more than, than the car manufacturer actually recommends. Okay. A lot of times I'm changing the oil at 12,000 miles or so. On the newer cars, well I say newer, the newest car I have is a 2008 and it's a Honda. And the oil is still looking pretty clean at, at, um, at 10,000 miles. So, But I do notice after that when I change the oil and put new in, it does run smoother. So I know that the oil is is dirty so so I think that the main benefit of this is that I'll have clean cleaner oil at 10,000 miles with this on they give you a little thread sealant Franz apply to all fittings for a positive seal must be some kind of oil resistant thread sealer all right so I got some on there thread it in there I hope so I'm gonna put a 45 on the other one because it's going more down I can show you there it's kind of a 45 angle. Where the hose hooks on, the hose bib thing. Okay, they, I've gotten it both ends on there and I've kind of figured out how much hose I need for each side. And uh, I'm just gonna make one cut. For now, okay, and hopefully that's enough. I think this side's gonna be long, but that's what it's looking like so far. So we'll see if I can get the bolt in there. I think I can. Also comes with some of this to protect the hose, which I'm definitely going to want to put on because I don't want to get that hose damaged. Now what I got to do is take off the uh, oil pressure sending unit and T into that. So the sending unit is right there, down 
Now I can get to it uh, below. I just have to take the oil filter off. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. There you can see the sending unit. That's what I'm gonna try to take off. So you just take the little wire off and then uh, you can get your, your wrench or whatever you can on there. So this is the, I took the sending unit out. Um, this is what I plan to put back. Um, but instead of hanging this whole thing, heavy piece of brass off of the, uh, the engine, which I don't even know if I can fit it into. With the vibration, I'm worried it might, see this would be a uh, a pipe nipple in, instead of that, but um, it might, with all the vibration, it might end up snapping off eventually with all this weight on there. So I'm just going to put this in there and then run a short piece of hose from there to there and then zip tie it to the underside of this motor mount and then I can put my hose which would go right here to feed my uh, filter onto this one and then a short piece of hose from here to here um, so that's the plan okay I decided to go with one of these down on the block just because the the 90 degree was just too tight, so I've got it screwed in. I've got this little piece of hose here that I'm gonna hook on there, and uh, that's where the uh, sending unit and the uh, supply line for the filter will go. Tighten that down. good putting the thread sealer on okay and I think this one's gonna go that way because I want the gauge in line oh this is what the tool I ended up using to get the um, the sending unit off because I didn't have the right socket but it would have been a lot easier if I'd have had a socket but I was able to uh, get a good grip on it with this. I really like this tool. You can get a really good grab on something if you want to. A regular crescent wrench was just slipping, so. And you don't really want to use vice grips. And this will hold without slipping. Good. And now I put that in the end. We're almost done. Okay. Uh, some people will say that's not a good idea probably to use a hose in that situation. But it's a high quality hose and I think it's a better deal than hanging that whole heavy piece of brass off the engine when it's vibrating all around. And it's really no different than having this hose because if either hose, if any of this hose breaks, you're going to lose oil pressure. So I'm just going to keep an eye on the hoses. I'm going to keep this protection on it. All right, so, so all I have to do is uh, clamp this to that T there and uh, I have to clamp clamp this to uh, the custom cap now I was doing some looking into this because I had some second thoughts on putting my return on the cap because 
as you see, that's a lower than the return, so that can't drain back into the oil uh, after after you shut the car off. And when you go to change that filter, that's going to be full of oil. And so I was going, to, I was looking into uh, putting it back into the oil pan, and there's a there's a punch and a special hollow bolt that you put in your oil pan to accept a uh, eighth inch fitting MPT and so that's about 30 bucks for that setup but for $50 for $50 you can get a sandwich plate that goes right underneath your oil filter and it has a an, an outlet and a return so a pressure um, fitting and a return so you can do away with the cap and you can also do away with uh, this T setup and both your hoses will come right under your your stock oil filter and it's only about that it's only about that thick so that's fifty dollars and I can do away with I won't have to spend the 30 on the anyways I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it like this for now until um, until I order parts and whatnot but uh, that's gonna be the uh, way I'm gonna do it ideally you can you can mount this in any orientation you would like sideways upside down whatever but the ideal way is to mount it like that so that the oil drains out overnight and then you replace you 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 can take this apart without getting oil everywhere so that's the ideal setup and that's what I was shooting for but I didn't think about the fact that the oil cap is gonna be higher than the so we're not gonna get a drain back I don't think Unless for some reason it would drain back on this one, which I doubt. I don't think it's going to drain back on this one, but uh, we'll see. I also got some uh, some zip ties to zip tie this wire out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this. Also, in case I wasn't clear on what this, what I'm trying to accomplish with this filter. I'm basically trying to get, I'm trying to sleep better at night going 10, 12,000 miles on my oil changes, which I, I typically do and I'm, and I'm okay with it. It's just that, uh, I think it's, I think it's going to be cool to have clean oil all the time. And you know, another thing I should mention is, um, having clean oil is not the only thing you, you want from your oil. Your oil also resists corrosion in your engine and, and, uh, and you have something called a, t a total base number and that's um, when that gets low your oil no longer can uh, resist corrosion and that's you want to also change your oil if your TBN gets low you would need an oil analysis to, to figure that out but if you change this often enough if you change this often enough or your or your car burns enough oil to where you can add enough new oil then your TBN should be uh, you should be just fine if you have to add oil already like I think this this car does uh, lose a little bit of oil at least I'm I'm adding oil to it every now and again I'm not sure uh, like a quart every thousand or two I don't know but uh, I do have to add I do have to add oil to it so I'm probably gonna be okay with my TBN so if I change that every 3,000 miles, you have to add maybe a half quart or so every time you change your roll if you are if you got a good drain back. If you waste all that oil, it's probably more like a quart. So anyway, uh, let me get this finished up. Okay guys, we are all done with the install. Hasn't been started yet. And I kind of wanted to see it come out of here. And what the color was uh, I'm gonna show you what the color of the oil is right now before I start it I don't know can you see that we'll compare it to the oil that's coming 
out. Okay. When I start it, let me start it real quick. Put that right there. There's no oil coming out yet. Just gotta fill this up first. Remember, there's a there's a restrictor uh, orifice on there, so it probably fills up kind of slow. Oh, there we go. So that's what it's looking like now. I'm gonna let it. Uh, run a little bit, then I'm gonna put some on some paper. Okay, so how this thing works is it shuts shuts off when you. I'm gonna open this up. Plug it back in. Whoops. You go shut it down. So that's what it's looking like after the filter. It doesn't promise to get the it's not going to normally get the oil to a golden color because some of the, the carbon particles or soot particles are below two microns. Man, I made a mess. So what some people do is they, they replace the, the toilet paper once it stops flowing and you can tell it stops flowing because your canister won't be really hot after you've driven it. And it's really hot now because I just, I mean, it, you'll be able to put your hand on it and not get burned. And it's pretty dang hot right now. So one of the main difference between a bypass and a stock oil filter is that a stock oil filter filters all your oil all the time. I mean, all your oil that's going to your engine is going through that filter. A bypass just has a little bit. So if that, if your stock filter gets plugged up, there's a, uh, there's a bypass valve that opens up at like 11 or 12 PSI. So if it gets plugged up, then uh, it stops filtering. Or if it's really plugged and you're going down the freeway and that valve hits 12 PSI, it's opening up and you're, you're now not filtering oil. So you don't want your stock filter to get plugged up. But it's uh, totally fine if this thing gets plugged up because you still have your stock filter. And for, uh, for reference, a stock filter is between 15 and 20 microns filtration and they say these can you can get two microns so there's really there really can't be a quality control on that because toilet paper is not not manufactured to a any kind of filtration specifications but that's what they say anyway at least with a high density toilet paper single ply like a scots or like the old scots they used to be able to get Anyway, let me know what you think. Uh, like and subscribe. I'm thinking about putting these filters on my other cars. So I'll keep you updated on uh, how it's going.